My name is Sam Vaknin. I'm a columnist at Brussels Morning, and this is an interview I granted to Scott Jacobson. Scott Jacobson is Insight, editor of Insight and other uh, publications. So this interview was about censorship, censorship in the East, censorship in the West, and how is censorship connected to the rise of idiocracy, <laughs> those of you who have seen the movie. Censorship is any suppression of speech that is motivated by an ideology or by the perception of risk avoidance. It is intended to prevent challenges to the interests of an existing establishment or system, or to safeguard secrets and national security interests. Censorship in authoritarian regimes, most of which are indeed in the East or Global South, censorship of this type is overt and institutionalized. The red lines are promulgated publicly and punishments for transgressions are enshrined in criminal law. In the West, censorship is far more pernicious. It is stealthy, self-imposed, and adheres to standards of political correctness that reflect the interests and concerns of the identity politics of vocal victimhood groups. Worst of all, the very existence of censorship is denied in the West, as public intellectuals, the mainstream media, and societal and legal institutions uphold the counterfactual myth of free speech. Censorship reflects the breakdown of trust in society and the need to use violence, both verbal and physical, to prevent the utter disintegration of the social fabric and the institutions that preserve the privileges of the elites. The sociologists Bradley Keith Campbell and Jason Manning posited that having, have to, that having transitioned from the age of dignity and reputation to the age of victimhood, all this is happening. This is not just about identity politics. As multiple studies have demonstrated in the past three years, victimhood is a profitable proposition and a way to reallocate scarce economic resources coercively. Additionally, we are in the throes of more than one century of unprecedented existential risks, from nuclear weapons and world wars to pandemics, climate change and, inv and invasive surveillance. The confluence of these two toxic trends has rendered speech a dangerous luxury. Speech acts are deemed subversive, offensive or malicious, even life-threatening, both on the collective and on the individual level. By far, political correctness is the greatest threat to our intellectual life and thriving. It has stifled legitimate scientific in inquiry, stymied public discourse, and penalized free thinkers of all stripes. It is comparable only to the Inquisition or to McCarthyism. There are various tactics used against public personalities naming and shaming, cancelling, mobbing, violence, Salman Rushdie, Jamal Khashoggi, to mention but a few, verbal abuse, smear campaigns, all tried and true methods originally perfected by narcissists and psychopaths. But mostly censorship targets the masses, the media, your average student or teacher, small to medium-sized businesses. In short, Censorship targets constituencies whose vested interests in the current power structure are not great and who therefore are more open to evolutionary and even revolutionary ideas. By far the most serious problem, though, is the inexorable rise of the idiocracy. Our contemporary world is ruled by the feeble-minded dimwits these people are empowered by technology, and everything is dumbed down to foster mass consumption. And in such a world, lower intelligence is a positive adaptation, which confers evolutionary advantages on its bearers and on their spouses and offspring. The stupid, the trivial and the frivolous are everywhere, among the working classes of course, but increasingly you can find them displacing the erstwhile elites spawning hordes of mindless politicians, 
idiot business tycoons, narcissistic media personalities, gullible clergy, vacuous celebrities, illiterate best-selling authors, athletes with far more brawn than brain, repetitious pop singers, less than mediocre bureaucrats, bovine gatekeepers, and even ignorant and semi-literate academics. And their cacophony drowns the few voices of wisdom, expertise, and experience. And their sheer number overwhelms all systems of governance and all mechanisms of decision-making. Rather than futilely fight back this tsunami, the well-educated, the erudite, and the intelligent choose to withdraw and seclude themselves in self-constructed schizoid ivory towers, all bridges down, drawn to the silos. With technology at their disposal, the stupid repeatedly interfere with and disrupt the proper functioning of virtually everything. The stupid, dimly aware of their innate inferiority, are anti-elitist, anti-intellectual, anti-excellence, and anti-expertise. But while in the past these remained mere sentiments, today they have become an ethos, a code of conduct, a set of values and ideals. It is politically incorrect and impolite and impolitic to claim any advantage and superiority. Malignant egalitarianism is running amok. Everyone is equal to everyone, doctors and their patients, professors and their students, experts and laymen alike, they're all the same. In an act of self-preservation, past civilizations had confined the stupid to certain settlements, replete with their drinking establishments, entertainments and sports arenas. There, in these settlements, the intellectually challenged could safely torment each other with their vulgarities and rampant, uninformed idiocy. But the advent of radio, television, and more, most egregiously the internet, has changed all that. Now stupid people have unmitigated access to the kind of technologies that allow them to pollute the airwaves and the broadband with their inferior analytic capacity, low-brow output, trivial observations, monosyllabic exclamations, and harebrained queries. And so the new media have transformed stupidity from a mental endemic to a viral pandemic. The wise and knowledgeable may broadcast, while the stupid merely narrowcast but the stupid have the upper hand. What with Google, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Blogger, Amazon, YouTube, decimating the traditional print and electronic media, which were uh, gatekept and, dis and intermediated. This technological empowerment is the crux of the problem. There are no barriers to entry, no institutional filters, no erudite and experienced gatekeepers or intermediaries to hold back the avalanche of doltish balderdash, the tsunami of nonsense and the flood of misinformation, factoids and conspiracies that corrupt our intellectual space. Discoverability, discovery, separating the wit from the shaft, this has, has become mission impossible. Commercial interests inevitably and invariably side with the brainless masses because of their superior aggregate purchasing power. The privatization of education is one manifestation of this creeping decadence and degeneration. The mindless nature of television programming is another example. The empty one-liners that comprise most conversations on social networks are its culmination. We are surrounded, by, surrounded with clods harassed by the lame-brained, criticized, censored, censored and ordered by simpletons. This is a new dark age, and censorship is just its hallmark.